Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm glad you guys are joining me today. And MSNBC is having a little bit of a panic attack after more and more information is coming out about Kamala Harris's VP pick. But beyond that is how they think he's going to help them in other states. They, the reason they picked them was because he was supposed to help them in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan uh, because of his Midwestern look and his Midwestern tone. However, if you look at the breakdown of his own state in his most recent election back in 2022, you'll see that it is really not going to help them out. And these other states who are more of a swing state than Minnesota is, where Minnesota has to rely on St. Paul in order to elect a radical Democrat like we have there with uh, Tim Walsh in Minnesota, they have to rely on that city the most. And the election expert here on MSNBC delivers brutal news to the uh, cast there, telling them, yeah, he isn't going to help the ticket in the way you think he's going to help the ticket. And beyond the other things, you know, stolen valor, and of course him uh, declaring that uh, pedos can be part of the LGBT uh, protected category, uh, putting tampons in boys' bathrooms, um, and a host of other things, stolen valor, uh, all of kinds of things. He had a very problematic individual. He is as flawed as Kamala Harris, and this is why they're using this hideaway tactic uh, with these two um, leading up to the convention. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at this video over here brought to us by Daily Caller, uh, highlighting the actual panic in their tone. Let's take a listen. React to this announcement this morning. Good to have you here. And now I'm joined by NBC's national political correspondent, Steve Kornacki. So we know Walls won his seat in 2022 as he uh, campaigned for governor. What can you tell us about how that informs, you know, the bigger picture here with the election? Yeah, sure. I mean, what you're hearing here, I think, from a lot of Democrats is the a hope that Tim Walls uh, can help them next door from Minnesota in Wisconsin. Uh, this is the edge of the UP, Michigan here and Pennsylvania as well, because, of course, the reason those three states are so vital, they went Trump 16, they went Biden 2020 in all three of those states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin and Michigan have large populations of blue collar white voters who've moved in the Republican direction, moved in the Trump direction, really starting in 2016. So the question uh, with Walls and the hope for Democrats is, has he demonstrated in Minnesota a state that is very similar demographically to those other three? It's a little bit more Democratic, but it's very similar demographically. Has he demonstrated an ability to reach those voters that other Democrats haven't? And take a look here. You see Tim Walz's 2022 uh, victory as governor, an eight point win over his Republican opponent. But I want to show you what went into that, because when you look at Minnesota, <clears throat> what you're looking at is the majority of the population is right here in the Twin Cities, Twin Cities metro area. Everything outside of this is what they kind of call greater Minnesota. And the divide in Minnesota demographically is when you get into the uh, Twin City areas, that's where you get. We talk about this all the time. White voters with college degrees with higher incomes, suburban metropolitan areas, areas that are becoming more and more intensely Democratic, both in Minnesota and nationally, where Democrats have been losing support in Minnesota and elsewhere is in greater Minnesota, places like greater Minnesota, a lot of rural areas here, a lot of small towns, and you're seeing a lot of red here. Now, did in greater Minnesota, Tim Walls demonstrate strength that Democrats haven't? Well, I'll show you here. Let's compare it. Take a look at this, like one of these eye chart tests here. You see Walls by eight statewide. You see what the map looks like. I'm going to call up the Biden map in 2020. Oh, <laughs> that was supposed to be more dramatic. And here it is. And if you can remember what you were looking at before, this looks virtually identical, both the total here, the margin and what this map looks like. And so when you look at what Tim Walls actually pulled off to get elected, to get reelected in 2022, um, it's the Biden model demographically, regionally. I mean, you go county by county, there's not much variance between how Walls did and how Biden did. Walls ran up huge numbers. Look at this, like, and this is the biggest county in the state, Hennepin County, Minneapolis here. Walls ran up huge numbers. Biden ran up huge numbers. Now go into greater Minnesota. Let's take a look at like Stearns County here. Look, Walls lost this by 23 points. What did Biden lose it by? 23 points. And this is the kind of county, by the way, in Minnesota and across the Midwest here, the Democrats are hoping 
walls will help them with. Because, look, let's go back in time here. Once upon a time, just a dozen years ago, Democrats weren't winning a county like this. But look, Barack Obama was able to get 43 percent of the vote here, basically run just over 10 points behind Mitt Romney. Obama was able to do that in a county like Stearns, and he was able to do that in counties like this all over the Midwest, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. You see that fell off the cliff for Democrats with Clinton, with Biden, and there's Walls, his his tally in this county, right between where Biden and Clinton's was. So the Walls victory in 2022 looks like what is now a standard Democratic victory in Minnesota. Heavy reliance on the Twin Cities metro area and taking big losses in greater Minnesota. The Democrats hope is that he's going to appeal to these blue collar areas in these other three states. Maybe he will. But when you look at what he's done in Minnesota, you don't quite see that. Yeah, Minnesota's not a swing state, obviously, hasn't voted for a Republican for president since the 1970s, if I remember it correctly. But uh, but you point out his potential to help them in other states that are key to that path to 270. Well, and it's, that's the question. I mean, look, and remember, Minnesota, not a swing state, although 2016, it was two and a half points. Before Joe Biden dropped out of the race, there was some polling indicating that Minnesota might be heading back into that. Sw- because, again, Minnesota, just to call this map up here, it's not as much of a swing state, certainly as a Wisconsin, Michigan or Pennsylvania. Why? Because there's a few the, the share of the electorate that is white and college educated. That's the very heavily Democratic t- trending group. It's higher in Minnesota by about five points than it is in those other states. So it gives Democrats an edge in Minnesota that they don't have elsewhere. And again, that edge is most pronounced in the Twin Cities metro area. And again, that is where you're seeing Stearns County here. But it was in this metro area where Walls ran up the score to win as he did, where Biden ran up the score in 2020 to win as he did. And it's the this part of the state, greater Minnesota, where you know Democrats, if you're thinking he's going to help you with voters you're losing in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and Michigan, those areas are similar to greater Minnesota. And you just didn't see in 2022 walls do anything there that Biden wasn't doing himself. All right, Steve Kornacki, thank you very much for breaking it down for us just like that. And we. Yeah, just like that, we see that Walls is not going to be a help on her ticket uh, to reach to greater. And this is why I mentioned in one of my live streams recently that Trump, uh, the Trump campaign needs to continue to reach out to that white voter, that white blue collar voter that that he seems have kind of kind of gotten lost in the campaigning where the focus has become more on Hispanics and blacks. Uh, it really needs to be reshifted back onto that forgotten man and woman worker, um, of course, in, in the Midwest, uh, because that's where he was successful back in 2016. That's where he was able to break the blue wall. And that's uh, what energized those blue collar workers to go out and vote for Trump, because he was the only candidate actually talking to the white uh, worker in those states. And I think he should probably maybe copy a little bit of that blueprint from the 26th campaign, uh, uh, moving further into the election, uh, making those stops and making the appeal to those workers. Because again, uh, if you look demographically, uh, the white population is the majority in this country. And that's where you should spend the majority of your focus on ensuring that those votes are locked in, at least in my opinion. Anyway, you guys tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Have a great, great day.